Hey, greetings, saints. Welcome to uh, chapter, Chaplain Peter 1. We're having church here today. And we want to look at uh, St. John chapter 8. We're going to start reading in verse 30. Let me know when you're there. 830. All right. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou we shall be made free? Jesus answered him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the reading of your word, God. We just pray for your gospel to go forth with power, Lord, to convict of sin, to bring men to Christ to bring back the backsliders and the ones that are living carnal lives, Lord, and that you might give understanding, Father. I pray now for your word to go forth, Father. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We know the Pharisees were always after the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Always trying to trip him up in his speech. Always trying to find somehow to uh, get him to say something so they could accuse him. When he would heal somebody on the Sabbath, uh, they called it uh, blasphemy and wanted to stone him to death. When uh, he would open the eyes of the blind or the ears of the deaf and he would do miracles, they said, well, you do it by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils, the prince of the demons. So continuously, these were a people that did not uh, desire to know God or seek God. And even when he wasn't in, in their very presence, God was made flesh. They could not see him. They couldn't understand him. They were full of bitterness, jealousy, envy. And finally, uh, Caiaph Caiaphas, the high priest, he finally prophesied that it's, uh, it's fit that one man should die for the nation, that the whole nation perish. He meant to kill Jesus so the Romans don't take the nation from him. He meant it in a bad way. But God meant it a different way. God meant it for good. Amen? That he should die for our sins and save as many as would, would believe on him. And so he's over here with the Pharisees. And uh, he speaks unto them. And he says in verse 31, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, what, what is Jesus saying? If, if, if you continue in my word, you know, it's not enough just to uh, know the word, to read the word. We must continue in the word. Amen? Constantly continue in the word. As I've been saved now almost 40 years, and um, things I've read maybe 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 10 years ago, and I go and I study and I read things over, and God even starts showing more. Amen? We've got a, a treasure here, a wealth of treasure in God's Word. And as we start looking into it, we, we start getting deeper and deeper into His Word, and God starts giving us more understanding and more understanding. So when you continue in God's Word, He says, then are you my disciples indeed. Amen? God wants us to be disciples. He said, all power and authority is given unto me. Matthew 28, the Great Commission. He says, go you out therefore and save as many people as you can. No. He says, make disciples of all nations. Amen? Of course, people need to be saved, but the goal is discipleship. This is, you know, all uh, sports have disciplines. Uh, other religions have certain disciplines. The Christian faith also has disciplines to make disciples. Amen? 
And we find the instruction here in God's Word. Here it is, right? And if we continue in the Word, the Word according to godliness, even the wholesome words of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul says in Timothy, that we, um, that we read His Word, that we obey His Word, that we live in His Word, that we come to His Word um, throughout, throughout the day, in the morning, in the evening, that His Word is on our mind as we work, uh, as we, whatever it is we, we do and we cease, uh, we continue, we never cease praying and have communion with God. So we continue in my word, then you are my disciples. You know some, um, I believe God would rather have one man that is fully, completely surrendered to God, sold out, obedient, doing God's will, producing fruit 60, 80, 100 fold for the Lord, than a thousand men that are carnal, living in sin, uh, living for this world, doing their own thing. Huh? Amen? Because as we read First and Second Corinthians, we see clearly uh, the carnality, and all Paul could do is correct them and exhort them and rebuke them continuously. And you know, today's church is not much different. And I'll tell you, what makes some people obedient and walk, and walk with God and others that are that are loose and everything well you know it, first of all it takes time to get established in God's Word amen and then also you need proper teachers to teach you God's Word to, to feed you his word that you may grow thereby unless we're being taught uh, the grace of God we're, we're being put under the law you got no choice it's either God's grace or you're going to be teaching the law. Many people, many preachers will preach. You're saved by grace through faith, not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works that any man should, be, should uh, boast. You're saved by grace. But then they put laws on you. They put condemnation on you. They put the other things on you. What is saying in Acts 15 when the church came together in Jerusalem? about the Apostle Paul and Barnabas that were preaching the grace of God to the Gentiles and, uh, and some of the Pharisees came in and, and they're saying unless you be circumcised unless you keep the laws of Moses you can't be saved so they came together for this pattern and what happened? Peter stands up he says how he went to a man's house it was unlawful for him to go in there Cornelius' house in Acts 10 and he started telling them about the Lord and how the Holy Ghost fell on them just like it fell on us in Acts 2 Peter says and, and Paul stood up and he started preaching uh, the miracles and the grace of God that was done among the Gentiles. And he came to the conclusion, why are we going to put these laws on the Gentiles, which we the Jews couldn't even keep? Amen? So it's important that we understand that we have to um, grow in the grace of God. The grace of God is, is what is going to set us free. Because if, if you're under... The law, what does the law do? You know? The law works wrath. I have not known sin except the law has said, Thou shalt not covet. Amen? Paul says that in Romans chapter 7. I didn't know what sin was until the law says, Thou shalt not covet. So, uh, the law didn't disappear. The laws of Moses, like uh, talking about the Ten Commandments, the moral laws, they've been fulfilled by Christ on the cross. He met the righteousness of God's laws by living a holy, blameless life before the Father. He's the only one that could go to heaven because he's, he's the only one raised with a glorified body. Amen? And we're to follow. He's the first fruit, so we are a type of first fruit. We're going we're gonna to also follow. But these Pharisees here, their hearts were not right. And they didn't want to know the truth. They didn't want to make be made free. They wanted to be teachers of the law, putting burdens on people, taking people, teaching them the law, making them twice the children of hell that they were themselves, the Bible says. And verse 33, they answered him, we are Abraham's seed. We're his descendants. We come from Abraham. And we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou you shall be made free? First of all, they were in bondage 400 years in Egypt, were they not? So right there, they don't know their history too much. 
Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Do we understand that? If you commit sin, if you practice sin, the word servant here is slave. You are a slave to sin. A slave is not a free man, is he? And if we're going to be free, we've got to continue in the word and be his disciples, and the truth shall make you free. Amen? So we need to make up our minds. Are we going to serve sin? Or are we going to serve God? Right there you can write in your Bibles, next to that verse, Romans 6. Romans 6. And so you, you write that. Don't be afraid to write your Bibles. And so next time you look at that, you'll see Romans 6, and you'll go see Romans 6. Ro Romans 6, I'll read to you some of it right now. It says right here in Romans 6 that uh, he says in verse... Five, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our Lord, or that our old man is crucified, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, with Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, See, that the old man, that old sinful nature that we're born with is crucified with Christ, and you've been planted with him. It's like a seed. You know, we've been called unto salvation. It says the Lord chose us before the foundation of the world and, and to be saved. That's what the word says. And you know, a seed, the scripture says when you read Genesis chapter 1, it says the seed which had the herb bearing seed within itself. The seed had the ability to reproduce itself. It had the seed in itself. Amen? And so you plant the seed, and the plant grows, and there's more seeds. Amen? Because it had the seed within itself, and it produces more seeds, a lot more. That's the law of the harvest. One seed planted, a good seed, a good big harvest. Evil seed planted, one, one evil seed planted, a harvest, a big harvest, because you always get more, an evil harvest. Amen? Sometimes Christians are suffering from uh, bad things we've done in our life. We haven't repented of them. We haven't confessed it to God to be washed by his blood. For uh, John chapter 1, verse 9, if, you shall, if thou shalt confess thy sins, he, he is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. A continual cleansing. That's not for somebody to get saved. That's a person who's already been born again that has a right to come to the throne of grace to look for forgiveness. So you don't go to God. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't go to God and ask Him to forgive your sin. It doesn't work that way. You've got to be saved first. And then after you're saved, as a believer, if you sin, and it will happen that you will sin, you can go to repent and ask God to forgive you. Amen? That's a real important principle there. Because some people, they just, they just think, well, I, you know, I got saved. What I got to confess my sins to God for? Because you sinned. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. And we're still in his sinful bodies. And we, and we still do wrong. So we need to get right with God. And that's, that's what he gives us. To get right with him. To confess his sins. Our sins to him. So he says that in Romans chapter 6, he says that the old man's crucified. So when, when Jesus died on that cross... He had the seed within himself. He rose like the plant grew only in a glorified body. A new type of humanity, a new man. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen? The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So he's a new man. And we are the seed. We have a seed in us. We, we are of that plant. Amen? And we are that seed. He had the seed, he had us within himself, just like the seed has the earth bearing seed within himself. Amen? That's why this was planned before the foundation, this was already set up before the foundation of the world, people. And unless you have, unless you've been chosen for, by God, I'm sorry. You know, we preach the gospel to everyone. But them that have the seed in them are the ones that 
that gets saved. Now, let's go back to um, John chapter uh, 8, and we'll keep reading here. And he says in verse 35, after, after he says in 34, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. See, the slave, he don't, he don't stay at that. He don't, he's not forever in the house, but the son is. And if you're in the son, if you've been a seed planted by the Lord Jesus Christ to produce fruit unto him, amen, then you abide forever in his house. He says, I, I've prepared a place for you, a mansion, amen? If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. Why doesn't his word have a place in him? Remember the parable? The sower went out to sow seed. The seed is the word of God. Some found the wayside, and the birds ate it. Those were the devils came, demons came and took it away. And then some fell on some kind of uh, stony ground, and it had no root. It sprung up right away, but it had no root. And as soon as they got offended, as soon as persecution and trouble came, they fell away from the faith. And then others started to grow, but they could produce no fruit because the thorns and the weeds started to choke them, representing what? The cares, the troubles, the problems, the, the pleasures of life, whatever you get yourself into, that is not of God. Amen? I want to tell you something. Every pleasure that you can find in this world, God is ready to give it to you in a holy way. You hear me? I'm not talking about, oh Lord, I want to get high. Can I get high in a holy way? Well, you can. Okay? You trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You won't need to get high. He'll, he'll give you joy. Amen? <laughs> you you want to just sleep around and uh, you're having sex and you're running around and you're going in bars and everything. There's no joy or happiness in these things. And so the Lord, he gives a wife, he gives a husband with a commitment to raise godly seed, the children. Amen? That's why this, uh, this sodomite stuff and this homosexuality we see today and this lesbianism and this people just living with one another and no commitment or nothing. And we wonder what's going on. Why is everything uh, falling apart? Why is, a, why is it so immoral? Why are the laws being changed the way they are? Well, you got to continue in the Word, amen? As the world falls apart, saints, let us continue in the Word, amen? As the carnal Christians and the carnal churches and the worldly churches and them playing luxury gospel and them that go along with homosexuals and homosexual priests and pastors and they want to marry these people together, let the world do it. Let them do it. You and me separate ourselves from this and we continue in the Word because we have the real seed in us, amen? We don't got the demonics, the devil seed. We have God's seed in us. Now, he says in verse 37, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. Isn't that something? Because my word had no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you, that, you do that which you have seen of your father. Well, what father is that? It's the devil, it's Satan. That's what it is. That's what he's saying here. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Now, wait a second. Back in verse 37, he says, I know that you are Abraham's seed. In verse 39, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But you seek to kill me, a man that told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Not all the Jews are real Jews. Amen? Not everybody that says they're saved is saved, are they? Only those that are born again, which have the seed of God in them. Amen? That, that's the truth. All right? This is important to understand. He says in Romans uh, 11, you don't have to go there, but uh, all, Israel, all Israel is not Israel. What's he talking about? Only then that are saved. Just because you're, you're Jewish and you're born after Abraham, or if you're a Muslim and you're trusting that, you know, Father Abraham, uh, the blessing went to Isaac and it went to Jacob. 
It's the promise that counts. Those that keep the promise of God. Amen? That, that's what's the inheritance. And so, he says here and then in, in uh, verse uh, 41, Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We have we be not born of fornication. We're not illegitimate. Our parents were married. We're not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto him, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Amen? They can't love him. Love your neighbor as you lo love yourself, the scripture says, right? To believers, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your might, all your strength, as your neighbor and you. They can't do it. They sought to kill him, and they did. They did. They turned him over to the Romans. And he says, Abraham didn't do this stuff. All right? Uh, and, and the Lord said, if God really was your father, in verse 42, you would love me. He says, I proceeded from the father, the word. The word was made flesh. He proceeded from the father and came from God. Neither came I of myself. He didn't come to be a witness of himself. He came to be a witness of God. All right? But, uh, but he sent me. He didn't come to be a witness of himself. Verse 43. Now look at this. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot under, you cannot hear my word. This world, who does not have the seed of Christ in them, cannot hear the word of God, lest they should repent and the Lord should heal them, that He would grant repentance unto them, and the Lord would heal them. They cannot. They cannot hear the word of God. Before I got saved, and people told me the word, I couldn't hear it. There had to come a time in my life. I actually was able to hear it and I was born again. Amen? That's the work of God. He plants the seeds. All right? It's his work. And these people could not hear it. They couldn't understand them. Verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. He didn't stay in the truth, live in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he, he, is, he is a liar and the father of it. Amen? That's who the devil is, a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Amen? So we, we have to understand, you know, John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice. Another one, when they hear another person's voice, they don't follow him. Because it's not, it's, not uh, it's not the shepherd, amen? We need to learn the voice of God. The voice of God is the voice of Scripture. Anything we hear that does not agree with this word is not of God. Amen? And we have to, we have to grow up and, and, and learn these things. So, you are the Lord's children if God's seed is in you. You are the planting of God. And we will bring forth fruit unto God 60, 80, 100 fold if we continue in his word. Amen? And we would be his disciples. Let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you now. Father, I just pray for everybody here and everybody listening out there on, uh, on YouTube, Lord. I just pray a blessing for them that they might search the scriptures, Lord, that they might continue in your word. I pray, Father, that you release them from strongholds and bondage and lies that have been perpetrated upon your church because your church is to be a free people. Your church is to be a holy people, a separate people, a planting of the Lord God himself, a sanctified people. So I ask you, Father, just loose them from all kinds of bondage, my God. All kinds of sin. All kinds of lies that you can continue in sin and you're still saved. You know, all kinds of uh, things that just hinder us from growing in you. And Father, I pray for the grace of God that they might understand it and grow in your grace. And we thank you, Father, in the precious name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
God bless you, saints. We'll see you next time, and we'll, we'll continue in these studies.